In the English town of Southend-on-Sea, there is a bizarre cryptid, one that is said to make appearances in pedestrian walkways at night. The legend has two versions. One version goes that the creature is the ghost of a dead homeless man. Many years ago, an elderly homeless man used to take shelter in a certain underpass in the town in order to escape from the rain and the biting cold at night. One night, the old man was accosted by a group of teenagers who occasionally hassled him for their own sadistic amusement. On this particular night, things became much more violent than they usually would. The teenagers beat the old man severely and stole his blanket. As he lay there dying, succumbing to his injuries and hypothermia, dozens of rats began to gather around his body, nibbling away at his cold flesh. After he finally died, he was devoured almost entirely by the rats, but then he came back. His spirit took the form of a rat, having spent his dying moments among them, and locals began reporting sightings of a ghostly rat man, haunting the very same underpass. The second version of the legend goes that in the mid-20th century, the town of Southend had a mayor that was a known serial adulterer. He had fathered numerous illegitimate children and, one day, a child was born with hideous deformities. It had a long, rat-like snout and a long, spindly tail. Keeping the deformed child a secret, along with all the other children, was already a difficult task. But as the child grew older, it began to develop a taste for human flesh. Perhaps the mayor had been cursed by his wife, or a former lover. The mayor knew that he had to keep the child hidden, but how? Then an idea struck him. He would order the construction of an underpass, a project that, in itself, wouldn't be seen as suspicious, but would then secretly have a concealed entrance to a chamber installed where he could hide the child. He would then tell the child that it could only leave the chamber at night in order to feed on unfortunate passers-by. We go now to the Greek island of Corfu, where there is a sea-dwelling cryptid known as the Corfu Island Creature, also known as the Grecian Dolphin. The creature was first photographed in 2015 in a Corfu sea cave. A British tourist by the name of Harvey Robertson noticed a strange colouring to the water and attempted to photograph it with his phone. It was only later he realised, when looking through the pictures he had taken, that in two of these photos a mysterious animal could be seen at the surface. It had grey skin, an elongated snout and small black eyes. There have been several theories put forward to explain this animal. Some believe that it's a deformed dolphin, mutated by toxic waste or other forms of pollution. Others say that it's an alien life form. Some believe it could be a surviving prehistoric animal, as it closely resembles the believed to be extinct Ambulocetus. It has also been alleged that the creature was nothing more than a plastic freeboard fender, which is attached to boats as a bumper to prevent damage that had broken off and floated away. The creature does loosely resemble this piece of boating equipment, which would be very convenient for any organisations seeking to cover up the creature's existence. And also, if it were just a piece of plastic, why would it only be visible for a few seconds and then disappear again under the water? Would it not simply float along the surface aimlessly if it were a piece of plastic? This certainly looks more like a curious cryptid that came for a quick look at the boat, saw nothing of interest, and then disappeared again. There's the Cactus Cat, which makes its home in the southwestern United States. It has been described as a bobcat-like animal that lives in the deserts of California, Nevada, and New Mexico, with a few sightings also being reported in Colorado. The Cactus Cat has thorn-like fur, sharp claws, a branched tail, and sharp bones protruding from its legs. They were first described by cowboys and pioneers in the 19th century, who observed that this strange, spiky desert cat would use its claws to slash open cacti and then drink the sap. While Cactus Cat attacks are rare, 
They have happened, with some cowboys waking up in the night to find welts on their bodies from the cat's barbed tail. It also has a distinctive and haunting wail that can usually be heard at night, along with the sound of their sharp leg bones rubbing together as they prowl the southwestern deserts. In the mountainous regions of western Japan, we have a cryptid named the Tsuchinoko, which when translated means child of hammer or dirt child. These snake-like creatures measure between 30 and 80 centimeters long, and are said to live in the watery caves of Shikoku and Honshu. They look like a common snake, but with a distinctive wide girth not typical of any other known snake species. It is said that you can detect the Tsuchinoko's presence by listening out for mouse-like squeaks coming from rivers, a sound that they are believed to make. If you are in the mountainous areas of western Japan and happen to see one of these creatures in the wild, it would be best not to approach it. They are highly venomous. The Ozark Howler is a creature said to inhabit the Ozark region of the state of Arkansas, United States. It is bear-like in shape and size with a grey-coloured shaggy coat and is said to have red glowing eyes. The earliest known report of the Ozark Howler is from the 1800s when a man by the name of Daniel Boone came face to face with the creature in Missouri. Boone is said to have fired his gun at the creature, but what happened after that is unknown. The Ozark Howler was seen in Newton County, Arkansas in 2011, and most recently in 2015 at Devil's Den State Park. In October 2014, an emergency call was made by a motorist, who said that they had nearly collided with a large, unidentifiable mammal. The recorded phone call reveals that armed state wildlife officers were immediately dispatched to investigate the bear-sized, grey, fast-running animal. However, no further details are available. The deserts of Arizona are home to a ghostly cryptid with a particularly disturbing story. The Red Ghost, also known as Phantasma Colorado, appears as a large, red-coloured, demonic, camel-like beast with a human skeleton attached to its back. The first sighting of the Red Ghost was in 1883 at a ranch near Eagle Creek in southeastern Arizona. Early one morning, two men rode out to check on their livestock, leaving their wives at the ranch with the children. Not long before noon, one of the men's wives went down to the spring to fetch a bucket of water, accompanied by two dogs, while the other remained in the house to watch the children. Suddenly, one of the dogs began to bark ferociously. The woman inside the house heard a blood-curdling scream. Looking out the window, she saw what she described as a huge, reddish-hued beast run by, being ridden by a devilish-looking skeletal creature. The frightened woman barricaded herself and the children in the house, and waited anxiously for the men to return. That night, they found the body of the other woman, trampled to death. The next day, tracks were found, along with cloven hoof prints much larger than those of a horse, and long strands of reddish-coloured hair. Some say that the Red Ghost is the spirit of a US Army Camel Corps soldier, who had an intense phobia of camels. In order to help him get over his fear, his commanding officer ordered that he be tied to one of the camels. Unfortunately, this particular camel managed to escape its pen and charged off into the desert with the poor soldier still attached. Unable to free himself, the unfortunate soldier died of dehydration in the desert, with the camel dying shortly after. Their combined spirits, eternally intertwined, now roam the deserts of Arizona, attacking anyone who unwisely tries to approach them. It's in the Middle Eastern country of Afghanistan, where in 2002 a US Army squad went missing near the city of Kandahar. Shortly after, a special ops task force was sent to the area to find out what had happened. They walked along a mountainous trail until they eventually reached the entrance to a large cave, Outside of it were broken pieces of US Army equipment, which had been scattered around the clearing. This was a strange sight indeed. 
The men were wondering what could have done this, and were about to enter the large cave when suddenly they were confronted by a giant humanoid, who emerged from inside the cave entrance and began to attack them. It was described as being between 12 and 15 feet tall, with red hair, two rows of teeth and six digits on each hand, and was equipped with a huge spear which it used to impale one of the task force soldiers. It took 30 seconds of continuous, concentrated fire before the giant was brought down. After it had been killed, the corpse was airlifted by helicopter back to base, but was apparently never seen again. The men were forced to sign non-disclosure agreements. All evidence of this event had been covered up or destroyed, until several years later when one of the witnesses broke his silence and talked about his experience publicly. Trading the deserts of Afghanistan for the swamps of Louisiana, USA, we have another humanoid cryptid that is said to attack humans on sight. The Lizard Man of Scape or a Swamp. The Lizard Man is said to be a seven feet tall creature with three digits on each hand, long black nails, green rough skin and red or orange eyes. The first reported modern sighting was in 1987 by a man named George Holliman Jr. However, it was the 1988 report by a 17-year-old Louisiana native by the name of Christopher Davis that made the Lizard Man of Scape or a Swamp famous. According to Davis, he had stopped on a road bordering Scape or a Swamp to change a tire which had blown out. When he was finishing up, he reported having heard a thumping noise from behind him, and turned around to see the creature running towards him. Davis quickly dived back into the car and locked the doors, at which point the creature tried to grab at the car and then jumped onto its roof as he tried to escape, clinging onto it as David swerved from side to side in an effort to throw it off. Eventually, the creature let go and ran off into the darkness. After he returned home, Davis's side view mirror was found to be badly damaged and scratch marks were found on the car's roof. Numerous other sightings have been reported, with the most recent being in 2011, some say that the Lizard Man is a reptilian alien, others say that it's a highly evolved dinosaur humanoid. However, with the last sighting having occurred over 10 years ago, it's possible that we may never know for sure. Still in the USA, but this time on the East Coast, we head over to the state of New Jersey, where the Jersey Devil isn't the only cryptid to call the state's forests its home. The Mantis Man, a seven feet tall, bug-like creature, has been spotted only three times, twice by fishermen near bodies of water, and once by a man driving near the Muscontgong River in New Jersey. The Mantis Man has been described as resembling a giant praying mantis, with its large eyes, small head, and long arms held in a praying fashion. Unlike many cryptids that have been known to attack humans, this cryptid seems to be rather shy, as each time it's been spotted by humans it quickly disappears. Rather than being an actual giant praying mantis, most cryptozoologists believe it more likely that the mantis man is an alien of the insectoid variety, or perhaps even a grey alien. Its head shape and large eyes would be a strong argument for this theory. The Cassi Rex is a gigantic theropod that was first spotted in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in 1932. It is thought to be a surviving relative of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and is one of several surviving dinosaur cryptids said to inhabit the Congo, along with another legendary survivor from the prehistoric age, Mokele Mbembe. In 1932, Famed Swedish explorer and hunter John Johansson and his servant were camping in the Congo when he decided he wanted to head out and hunt a huge elephant. They headed out and crossed a large swamp before finally reaching a savanna in the Kasai Valley. Upon reaching the valley, it seemed as though no animals were present until Johansson's servant began shouting with excitement as he spotted two elephants grazing. Johansson saw this as his opportunity, until something struck him as rather odd. There were just two elephants, and no others. Elephants travel in herds, 
so this was indeed a peculiar sight. Suddenly, after a moment, something around 40 metres away caught Johansson's eye. In the underbrush, something was moving, something large. Another elephant, perhaps? Johansson watched for a moment until suddenly a large, strange-looking creature jumped out. It was reddish in colour with black stripes. It had strong-looking hind legs designed for speed, two small forearms with two fingers on each hand, and a long snout with numerous sharp teeth. It was heading towards the two elephants, and Johansson, almost paralysed with shock, decided to aim instead for the large dinosaur-like creature that had appeared before him. He fired three times, with just one shot hitting the beast. It then turned and ran. After this encounter, Johansson decided to head back to camp, but first, they had to cross back over the swamp that they had crossed earlier. As they were crossing the swamp, they heard a splash, and believing it to be a crocodile, they stopped and looked around. After a few moments, they saw around 20 metres away, the very same dinosaur creature tearing the leg off of a rhinoceros that it had killed not long before. Johansson's servant ran away, terrified, taking the shotgun with him. Johansson now had no weapon, but he did have a camera. He aimed it at the dinosaur and took this photo. Upon hearing the click of the camera, the dinosaur quickly submerged itself under the swamp water and disappeared leaving the rhinoceros carcass floating in a pool of blood. That dinosaur was the Cassi Rex. Said to live in the wilderness of the southwestern United States and northern Mexico, the Lone Pine Mountain Devil is a winged carnivore, believed by some to be a west coast relative of the Jersey Devil. Also referred to as the California Mountain Devil, the animal is said to be a bat-like creature. The creature gets its name from the town of Lone Pine, California, one of its habitats in the Sierra Nevada mountain range, just outside of the town. The Lone Pine Mountain Devil is most often described as being a large, furry, winged creature with razor-sharp talons and deadly, venomous fangs. The creature was last seen in 1928, meaning there are no existing images of the creature caught on film. The creature's eating habits are particularly gruesome. This cryptid slaughters its prey by slashing violently at the head and torso. The majority of carnivorous animals kill to eat the meat of their prey. The Lone Pine Mountain Devil, however, is said to only eat the soft cartilage areas of the face, such as the nose and ears. It leaves the rest of its prey to rot in the hot sun. In the freezing waters of the Antarctic Ocean, there is a white-skinned humanoid cryptid known as the Ninjen. Ninjen, which means human in Japanese, are said to be between 20 and 30 meters in length. They have been spotted numerous times by crew members on board Japanese whale research ships and reportedly have a human shape with arms, legs, and hands with five digits. The only visible facial features they have are eyes and a mouth with no ears or nose. Occasionally, they are described as having tentacles or large mermaid-like tails. According to one eyewitness, Crew members on board one of these whale research ships spotted what they believed to be a foreign submarine in the distance. After getting closer to the mysterious object, however, they realized that what they were looking at wasn't a submarine at all. It was something else. Something alive. The strange humanoid quickly disappeared under the waves. In an article published in MU Magazine, a Japanese publication on all things Fortean, in November of 2007, the topic of Antarctic humans was speculated on. The article talked about the possibility of humanoid creatures living in the southern seas and included a Google Earth screenshot showing what appears to be a ninjen off the coast of Namibia. The Japanese government is believed to have kept detailed records of the sightings, but they have released no information to the public and have apparently instructed eyewitnesses to keep quiet. 
Heading now to the county of Cornwall in England, we have a winged humanoid cryptid that was sighted between 1976 and 1995. The Owl Man, with its red eyes and ability to fly, is strikingly similar to another winged entity that is well known within the field of cryptozoology, the Mothman, which has a long and terrifying history of showing up in areas where disasters are soon to occur, the collapse of the Silver Bridge in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, USA being the most well known. Some theorize that the Owl Man and the Mothman are one and the same, Others believe they are two creatures of the same or similar species. In 1976, Tony Doc Shields, a paranormal researcher, comes forward and talks about an investigation he had conducted. Two young girls, who were visiting the area, had spotted a large, winged creature hovering above the church tower in Monan, Cornwall. The girls dubbed the creature they saw the Owl Man. Around two months later, 14-year-old Sally Chapman and her friend Barbara Perry were camping near the very same church in Mornan. Miss Chapman reported that as she was standing outside of her tent, she heard a strange hissing sound. She turned around and, with a fright, saw a creature that resembled an owl, which was as big as a man and had red eyes and pointed ears. The entity then flew up into the air, revealing sharp, black talons on its feet. Sightings of the creature were also reported the following day, and were reported two years later in 1978, again near the same church. Researcher Jonathan Downs interviewed a young man, referred to as Gavin in his book The Owl Man and Others, who along with his girlfriend witnessed a creature in Cornwall that was about five feet tall, the legs had high ankles and the feet were large and black with two huge toes on the visible side, and the eyes definitely glowed. In 1995, a tourist from Chicago wrote to the Western Morning News in Truro, Cornwall, that she had witnessed a man-bird with a ghastly face, a wide mouth, glowing eyes and pointed ears, as well as clawed wings. Awi Zot are small, canine-like cryptids, with streaks on their heads, small ears, and a hand-like appendage on the top of its tail. Scientists believe that the Awi Zot may have actually existed and was a type of otter or ferret. The ancient legend goes that the Awi Zot would submerge itself in a lake or stream and begin to emit a wail, said to sound like that of a small child or a frightened woman. A passerby would hear this wailing sound, and then rush to the rescue. Upon approaching the water, the victim would be grabbed by the throat by the creature's infamous tail hand, and strangled to death. The creature would then tear out the victim's eyes, nails and teeth, and eat them. It would then toss the lifeless body onto the riverbank, and restart its wailing. European explorers found dozens of undiscovered species in the steamy jungles of West Africa, like the Bongo and the Okapi. Along with these now confirmed species, they also brought back tales of strange beasts that they learned of only through African legends told to them by locals. There are many such creatures, but the Dingo Neck is definitely among the strangest of them. Called the Jungle Walrus, Big Game Hunter Edgar Beecher Bronson described Dingo Neck as being 14 or 15 feet long, head big as that of a lioness but shaped and marked like a leopard, two long white fangs sticking down straight out of its upper jaw, back broad as a hippo, scaled like an armadillo, but coloured and marked like a leopard, and a broad fin tail. The Dingo Neck is said to be carnivorous, and it can hunt or devour any other creature apart from elephants. Its tusks are over a meter long and the creature is so large and capable of such ferocity that even large bull hippos fall prey to it. ...to South America, specifically the countries of Colombia and Venezuela, where we have a legendary figure known as El Silbon, which means the Whistler in Spanish. Some call it a cryptid, some call it a lost soul. 
Whatever El Silbon is, you had better hope you never run into it. The legend arose sometime in the middle of the 19th century. According to the legend, El Silbon is the spirit of a youth who brutally killed and disemboweled his father for killing his wife, El Silbon's mother, who rationalized his actions by saying that she was a slut and that she was asking for it. After what has happened was discovered, the youth's grandfather ordered he be tied to a post in the middle of the countryside and lashed him until his back was a bloody, torn open mess. His wounds were then cleaned with alcohol and he was released with two rabid, starving dogs set upon him. Before releasing him, his grandfather gave him a sack containing his father's bones, which he condemned him to carry for all eternity. El Silbon, the whistler in English, gets its name from the characteristic whistle that resembles the musical notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B in that order. Rising in tone to F, then lowering to B, it is said that when the whistling sounds close by, the person hearing it is not in danger. But when the whistling sounds far away, El Silbon is nearby. In this situation, the only thing that can save you is the sound of a dog barking, holding out a chili with your hand, or cracking a whip, the only three things that seem to deter or frighten it. Many Venezuelan and Colombian locals say that they have seen it, primarily in the summer, a time when the Venezuelan savanna burns from the extremely high temperatures, when El Silbon is said to sit in the trees and gather dust from the burning foliage in its hands. However, it seems that it's mainly on rainy or humid days that it wanders, hungry for death, and desperately wanting to slaughter drunkards, womanizers, or, occasionally, innocent victims. Despising drunkards, it is said that when it captures one, it pins them down and sucks the alcohol out through their belly button. When it captures a womanizer, it tears them to pieces, collects their bones, and puts them in its old, tattered sack, where it keeps the remains of its father. On certain nights, El Silbon is said to stop outside of a house, empty his old sack of its bones on the ground, and count them one by one. If somebody in the house hears it, nothing bad will happen. However, if El Silbon remains unnoticed and no one hears it before dawn, one member of the family will never wake up again. Some other versions of the legend say that El Silbon is a giant, around six meters tall, and that it moves about the treetops, emitting its chilling whistle. Across the United States of America, the hide behind haunts the woods. It is said to be a nocturnal creature that preys upon any humans foolish enough to wander into the woods at night, and was credited with the disappearances of early colonial loggers when they failed to return to camp. Early accounts describe hide behinds as being large, powerful animals with what would seem to be the supernatural ability to always remain just out of sight and just out of view. They are noted for their ability to conceal themselves, and when a person attempts to look directly at it, it would hide behind an object, or behind the person's back. The hide behind uses this ability to stalk human prey without being observed, and to attack without warning. Once the person is killed, the hide behind drags the person back to their lair to be eaten. which means Big Earthworm in Portuguese, is a Brazilian cryptid that resembles a large, fish-like worm, reported to be up to 150 feet in length and up to 10 feet wide, and is described as having thick, armadillo-like scales. The Minocau was described to European explorers in the 19th century by locals in Brazil, with claims that they lived in lakes and would often drag horses and horned cattle under the water, similar to how crocodilians behave. It is thought to be a burrowing animal, and has been blamed for severe damage to local roads. There have also been reports of buildings collapsing, and rivers having their course altered due to the Minocow's burrowing activity. Respected cryptozoologist Carl Schucker suggests that the Minocow could be a giant Sicilian, an amphibian with a limbless body and subterranean and aquatic habits. The Minocow, however, 
now appears to have gone extinct as there have been no reported sightings in over a century. In the African country of Niger, there is a small dinosaur with dragon-like characteristics. It is a Spinosaur, known as the Niger Fire Spitter and was first seen in Arlit, Niger in 1984. It was found by local uranium miners, who were then chased by the fire spitter to Arlit, where it was shot by soldiers on duty in the area. Africa is thought to be home to a number of surviving dinosaurs. Notable examples include Mokele Mbembe, a sauropod which inhabits the rivers of the Congo Basin, and the Kasai Rex, also a Congo-based cryptid, which is said to be a carnivorous tyrannosaur, or possibly a carcarodontosaur. Though small in stature, the Niger fire spitter is equipped with tough skin like that of an elephant. Its skin is the colour of sand, with small, black and white spots. Spines start from the base of its neck and finish before the tail, and it has a crocodilian head. The feet are like that of an ostrich, with big claws. When it was attacked by army personnel in 1984, the creature retaliated by spitting fire at them, while hunching and elevating its spines. Eyewitnesses reported that it had a height of between 60 and 80 centimetres and had large eyes, leaving some to believe that the Niger fire spitter killed in the early 1980s was a baby. A month-long search was undertaken to search for its mother, however this search turned The Conrit is an enormous ocean-dwelling centipede which makes its home in the southeast Vietnam Sea. Its body is made up of segments, comprised of bony plates, and has fish-like fins which it uses to swim. Initially, research of the Conrit was conducted by Dr. A. Kremp, director of the Oceanographic and Fisheries Service of Indochina in the 1920s. During his research, Dr. Kremp interviewed an eyewitness named Tran Van Con, a Vietnamese native who reportedly touched a beached Con Rit in 1833. He reported that the creature was around 60 feet long and 3 feet wide. In 1899, the HMS Narcissus was travelling near Cape Falcon, Algeria, when several of the sailors aboard sighted what they called a sea monster. They estimated it to be roughly 135 feet in length, and claimed that the creature possessed an immense number of fins, which they said propelled it through the water with enough speed to keep pace with the ship. They observed the creature for nearly 30 minutes before it sank below the surface and disappeared. In 1883, several Vietnamese men found a decapitated carcass that had washed ashore in Hong Gai, Vietnam. The head was gone, but the body was formed of segmented joints that rang like sheet metal when struck. According to the account, the carcass smelled so badly that it had to be towed away into the sea. Cryptozoologists have suggested a number of possibilities for what the Conrit could be. Some say it's a primitive whale, a relative of the Zooglodons which over millions of years has evolved bony plates. It could also be a giant crustacean or other segmented sea creature. It could also be a giant remipede, a creature similar to the centipede but blind and ocean dwelling. We know much less about our own oceans than we know about the surface of Mars. As such, mainstream scientists believe that if giant animals were to be discovered, they would most likely be discovered in the deep sea. Off the coast of Hook Island, Queensland, Australia, there is a 90-foot sea monster that resembles a giant black tadpole that has an enormous mouth, small teeth, and eyes that sit on top of its head. The Hook Island sea monster was sighted in 1964 by Robert Lasseric and his family when it charged towards his boat with its mouth wide open, looking as though it were about to attack. Lasseric noticed that the creature's tail was injured, either by a ship's propeller or by an even larger sea-dwelling creature. He stated that he could only see its head clearly once the creature had gotten to within 20 feet or so of the boat. 
Its head was quite large, around four feet from top to bottom, with a gaping mouth about four feet wide. The skin was smooth but rather dull, like that of a shark, and was brownish black in colour with brown rings repeating along the length of its body, while the eyes were a pale green. He said that he saw no fins or spines, or any obvious breathing openings, although he believed that there would have to have been some, being an underwater creature. The creature's teeth appeared to be small, and he also noticed fragments of a sort of dark substance hanging from the upper row of teeth. Behind its head, the body was a little over two feet thick, and remained that way for about 25 feet, where it gradually tapered into what he described as a whip-like tail. Just as it seemed it would swallow the boat, it suddenly swam away. Lacerec managed to capture photographic evidence of the creature. Some claim that these photographs are doctored and fake, and that they have simply been edited to look a certain way. We must remember, however, that these photographs emerged in the 1960s, long before the days of Photoshop or editing software. To forge photographs of this kind in the 1960s would not be something just anybody could do, and would have taken tremendous skill, skills of which there is no evidence of Robert Lacerec having possessed. The Hook Island Sea Monster has been described as one of the most credible of possible undiscovered cryptids, and one of the most likely to exist. It is also notable in the fact that there is actual photographic evidence, as is the case with the Loch Ness Monster, or Bigfoot, though the sea monster that dwells in the waters off Hook Island is nowhere near as well known. The eyes are just visible in the photo taken by Robert Lacerec, and this is perhaps one of the most frightening of cryptid close encounters that we know of today. There is one cryptid that is known only through a recorded sound, Julia, as the creature has since been nicknamed, was recorded in March 1999 by the US-based National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. It was recorded using a piece of equipment called the Equatorial Hydrophone Array, and lasted for 15 seconds. NOAA researchers have officially stated that the recording is the sound of a large iceberg running into the sea floor and nothing more. But since when were government agencies worthy of our trust? Some say that Julia is in fact a gigantic ocean-dwelling creature, a sea serpent perhaps. Or maybe what the NOAA recorded that day was the sound of the Kraken going about its deep sea-based business. I will play the sound that was recorded that day for you now, Traveller, and you can judge for yourself. We must now temporarily take leave of the ocean, Traveller, but we will be back soon. For now, we will be heading to Richtersveld, South Africa, where in a deep, dark cave there is a bizarre and frightening cryptid, said to resemble a half-snake and half-elephant hybrid. The Groot Slang, Afrikaans for Big Snake, is a legendary creature said to be as old as life itself. The tales told by the ancients state that the gods, who were new to the crafting of living things, made a terrible mistake in the Grootslang's creation, and made it too strong, too cunning, and too intelligent. Realising that they had made a grave mistake, the gods split the Grootslang into separate creatures, creating the first elephants and the first snakes. But, one of the original Grootslangs escaped, and from this first evil specimen, all other Groot Slangs were born. The Groot Slang, possessing similar characteristics to elephants, is said to be able to trick them by using the same communication methods they use amongst themselves. It can lure them into the cave it inhabits, and then, 
Once it has one cornered and trapped, it devours them. The cave that the Groot slang we know of inhabits is known as the Wonder Hole or the Bottomless Pit. It connects to the sea, which is 40 miles away, and would suggest that when the Groot slang isn't hunting for elephants, it could be spending time in the ocean. Is it possible that the Groot slang could, when spotted in the oceans by seafarers, be taken for a sea serpent? It has also been said that, along with its cave, the Groot slang can live in warm lakes and rivers. A monstrous, semi-aquatic beast, just as at home on dry land as it is in water, and eats elephants. No wonder the powers that be want to keep this cryptid hidden from the public. Descriptions vary slightly by region. In Benin, it is described as a huge elephant-like creature with a serpent's tail. It has also been depicted as a snake with orange gems for eyes. Some say that Groot slangs have magpie-like qualities and have a particular fondness of gems, particularly diamonds, and despite the creature's lust for cruelty, victims can often bargain for their freedom by offering a Groot slang enough precious gems. In 1917, while searching for treasure in Richtersveld, South Africa, English businessman Peter Grayson disappeared after members of his party were attacked and disappeared. The official story states that the Grayson party were attacked by lions before they went missing. But a treasure hunt in Richtersveld would have logically taken them to a cave where diamonds are said to be plentiful. A cave inhabited by the Grootslang. We go now to the United States of America, Colorado to be exact, where high up on Lizard Head Mountain there is an enormous cryptid known as the Slide Rock Bolter, the bane of the lumberjack's existence in the 19th and 20th centuries. Said to resemble a giant leech, the Slide Rock Bolter clings to the side of mountains, its tough rocky skin blending in perfectly with its surroundings. It uses its dolphin-like tail with two strong grab hooks to gain purchase on a mountainside, with a preference for an angled slope of 45 degrees or more, where it can lie in wait comfortably. It waits and it waits, with incredible patience for an unwitting victim to stumble upon it. When a hiker, traveller or wild animal wanders by, it lets go of the mountainside with its tail and quickly slides down the slope its mouth wide open, and before the unfortunate victim even knows what is happening, blackness, for it has been swallowed, alive and whole, by the slide rock bolter. The beast then crawls backwards, back up the slope, and latches onto the ridge to lie in wait again. It has also been said that its own speed will allow it to slide up an opposite slope, once it has captured its prey. It's able to achieve these immense speeds through use of a thin skid grease that is constantly being produced in its mouth and is drooled out before it begins its descent. Though blamed for a great number of tourists vanishing, this hasn't stopped people venturing up Lizard Head Mountain hoping to catch a glimpse of the creature. The only problem is that for some, the Slide Rock Bolter is the very last thing they ever catch a glimpse of. Back to Africa now, my friend, to find and observe a Congolese cryptid whose existence is guaranteed to keep most people up at night. The Jabar Fofi is not for the faint-hearted traveller. A giant spider with a leg span measuring between 6 and 8 feet when fully grown, this is a cryptid you had better hope you never come face to face with if you're ever travelling through the Congo. The first sighting by European explorers was in the 1890s, when British missionary Arthur John Symes and his men came upon one of the creatures. His men had gotten themselves tangled in an enormous web, and two giant spiders, two feet in length and the other four feet in length, thought to be a male and female, came out of their hiding place and attacked them. Symes was bitten by one of the creatures, but managed to escape after shooting one of them with his pistol. 
Shortly after this incident, he developed symptoms including a deathly pallor, severe chills, and severe swelling around the area where he was bitten. Not long after, he became delirious before falling unconscious. He eventually succumbed to these effects and died. Many stories of the Jabar Fufi describe its hunting habits. They are said to dig a shallow tunnel under tree roots, which they then camouflage with a large screen of leaves. They then create an almost invisible web between their burrow and a nearby tree, stringing the whole area with a network of trip lines. When a prey item unwittingly trips the line, the spider is alerted, at which point the victim will then be chased into the larger web. This behaviour would seem to indicate that the Javar Fofi is perhaps a giant species of trapdoor spider. In 1938, a sighting was reported by an English couple, the Lloyds, who while travelling through what was then known as the Belgian Congo reported seeing a large object crossing the trail in front of them. At first, they thought it was a cat or monkey, but they soon realised it was a spider with legs nearly three feet. Respected cryptozoologist William J. Gibbons has spent time in the Congo hunting for the Congolese surviving dinosaur, Mokele Mbembe. On his third expedition in search of the creature, he came upon natives who related their experiences with giant spiders. They told him that the Jabar Fofi not only existed, but were at one time a common sight in the region, though their numbers did seem to be dwindling in recent years. The natives would typically avoid the giant spiders, and would not be bothered by them if they stayed outside of their territory, though it was reported that they had killed them in the past. Sightings have been reported as recently as 2014. In 2013, a video surfaced on YouTube in which a Jabar Fofi was briefly caught on night vision camera in Mozambique. It appears out of the darkness near a watering hole, before quickly scurrying out of view. The slender, delicate palps, with the fury of starved serpents, quivered a moment over her head. Then, as if with instinct and demonic intelligence, fastened upon her in sudden coils, round and round her neck and arms. Then, while her awful screams and yet more awful laughter rose wildly to be instantly strangled down again into a gurgling moan, the tendrils one after another, like great green serpents with brutal energy and infernal rapidity, rose, retracted themselves, and wrapped her about in fold after fold, ever tightening with cruel swiftness and savage tenacity of anacondas fastening upon their prey. This was an account by German explorer Carl Litch, written in the Australian Register in 1881, about witnessing a human sacrifice by the Mkodo tribe of Madagascar, in which a young woman was sacrificed to a carnivorous tree. Carnivorous trees are said to grow in the deepest parts of the jungles of Central and South America, as well as in parts of Africa and along the shores of the Indian Ocean. There are many different descriptions of the plant, but the majority of reports say it has a short, thick trunk, and long, tendril-like appendages which are used to catch prey. Smaller carnivorous plants are known to exist, the Venus flytrap being perhaps the most well-known example. As with other species of animals and plants, which can be related and yet differ greatly in size, could it not be possible that the carnivorous tree could simply be a large relative of the Venus flytrap? Its usual prey could be animals, but if a human being were to unwittingly wander by, the carnivorous tree would likely still seize the opportunity. In the Alpine mountains of Switzerland, Austria, and Bavaria, there is a strange, worm-like cryptid, said to be around three feet long. The tatzel worm, meaning worm with feet, is said to be a cylindrical creature with small, stubby limbs, similar in appearance to the mealworm, but with a blunt, cat-like head and powerful jaws that house deadly, venomous fangs. 
The tatsel worm shares quite a few similarities with the Mongolian death worm, another worm-like cryptid that makes its home in the scorching hot Gobi Desert of Mongolia. While the Mongolian death worm spits a corrosive, acid-like venom at its prey, its Western European counterpart, the tatsel worm, emits a deadly toxic gas instead. There have been many tatsel worm sightings over the years. In 1723, naturalist Johann Jacob Schuzer recorded an event in which a tatsel worm was killed by a man named Jean Tinner. Tinner had come across the creature on the Frumensberg mountain in Switzerland while walking with his father, and reported that it was around six feet long and was black and grey in colour. It raised its head quickly, in an aggressive fashion, at which point Tinner shot and wounded it with a musket. Together, he and his father managed to kill the creature, though they decided not to take its remains home with them. In 1903, Austrian Privy Councillor A. von Drasenovich was told about a tatsel worm attack by a friend, who told him that a hunter at an altitude of 4,900 feet near Murau in Stiermark had encountered the creature. He said that it was around 19 inches long and about 3 inches thick. Upon approaching the creature for a closer look, it suddenly leapt at his face. He slashed at it with his knife instinctively, but the blade was no match for the tatsel worm's rock-hard scales. The beast wasn't finished with the hunter, either. It lashed out at him again, lunging at his face six more times before turning around and retreating into a crack between some rocks. Tatsel worm encounters were reported throughout the 20th century, and while some believe the creature to be nothing more than a skink or a snake, the sheer amount of reports made that describe this creature as being something else, with highly similar descriptions, cannot be ignored. I told you we would return to the Sea Traveller, and while this cryptid isn't quite as titanic in size as the Kraken, it's no underwater teddy bear either. Off the coast of Mexico's Baja California Peninsula, the Black Demon Shark, El Demonio Negro in Spanish, lurks in the deep. The Black Demon Shark is a huge black-coloured shark, similar in appearance to the Great White Shark, only much larger. In recent times, several local fishermen have reported seeing this black monster, which is said to be between 20 and 60 feet long, and weighing anywhere between 50,000 and 100,000 pounds. Some say that it could be a surviving Megalodon, a prehistoric shark thought by mainstream science to be extinct. If the coelacanth has taught us anything, though, it's that supposedly extinct sea creatures can turn up alive and well in modern times. Others suggest that it could be a new species of shark. We know more about the surface of Mars than we do about our own oceans, of which we have only explored a small percentage. It is entirely possible that a new species of enormous shark could exist in the unexplored depths, surfacing occasionally in the pursuit of food. My advice? Avoid the Baja California Peninsula. Africa really is home to a number of fascinating cryptids, Traveller. We've looked at giant spiders, man-eating plants, and horrifying snake-elephant hybrids, when it comes to African cryptids, however, easily the most notable among them are the surviving dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures presumed to be long extinct. The Kongamato is one such surviving creature from prehistory. Making its home in the countries of Angola, the Congo, and Zambia, the Kongamato is a pterosaur whose name, when translated, means breaker of boats or overturner of boats, as the Kongamatos are said to be fond of capsizing the canoes of natives, and have also attacked people who wander too close to the riverbanks where they build their nests. The Kongamato is described as a reddish lizard with membranous wings and sharp teeth in its beak. 
Its wingspan ranges from 4 to 100 feet, suggesting either sightings of juvenile through to adult specimens have been made, or there are in fact a number of variations of this particular species, and they vary greatly in size. When shown a picture of a pterosaur, Congo natives said that it was a picture of a Congomato. The accounts told of these creatures are similar to the ones that describe another surviving pterosaur, known as the Ropen, which inhabits Papua New Guinea. There are several historic reports of European explorers being attacked by large, winged creatures, and quite often people were reported to have received wounds from the Congomatos. It is said to eat mostly fish, but occasionally they have killed humans for food. The Congomato is also said to dig up graves and steal human corpses, because in Africa, the burial of bodies is usually not too deep. The smell of rotting flesh must be quite alluring to this flying menace. To the skies. Up there, above the clouds, are the atmospheric jellyfish. These cryptids are, quite literally, beyond comprehension. Utterly baffling to the scientific community, and defying all known laws of physics, the atmospheric jellyfish hovers above, and has been the subject of intense debate for decades. As the name would suggest, the creature bears a strong resemblance to a jellyfish, and has been reported hundreds of times by witnesses across the globe, from Norway to China to Russia. The first known sighting was in 1974, with the most recent being in 2015. There are many pieces of photographic evidence showing the atmospheric jellyfish, from many independent witnesses from all over the world. To capture even one image of a cryptid is incredibly difficult, and cryptid photographs are rare. To have so many photographs of one type of cryptid from so many different places makes this case truly unique and exciting. Some say the atmospheric jellyfish is a cryptid, others believe them to be UFOs. The establishment would have you believe that it's simply a weather phenomenon, or a trick of the light. But as we all know, the men in charge would much rather keep us in the dark when it comes to a lot of things. All across the United States of America, there have been stories of dogmen. Hairy humanoids with canine features who walk on their hind legs. There seem to be several of them out there, and individuals have been named according to the area they were sighted in. The Beast of Bray Road and the Illinois Dogman being two examples. There have been numerous reports of dogmen digging up graves, a trait that is certainly attributable to dogs. There is also photographic evidence of the Dogman, further reinforcing the case for its existence. Cryptozoologists have been seeking answers to the mystery of the Dogman for years. Some believe it to be a werewolf-type creature, others think that it is a wolf cryptid, a new species yet to be discovered. Others, who wish to keep things as narrowed down as possible, prefer to think of all these sightings as nothing more than an escaped pet wolf. A number of cryptozoologists believe that instead of being dog-like, it is actually a type of Bigfoot, which is also a hairy humanoid cryptid, and that out of shock and fear, witnesses were confused and incorrectly described the creature's features when reporting their experience. This does beg the question, however, of how every single person to have reported seeing a dogman could have described it as being dog-like in appearance and not ape-like. Were they all confused? Do apes and dogs look at all the same? Of the dozens of dogman sightings to have been reported, was every single person mistaken in exactly the same way? Cryptid Central disagrees with this hypothesis. There are said to be around 7 million animal species on planet Earth, of which we have only discovered around 1.5 million. There could be a dogman out there, perhaps an evolutionary step between canines and a new form of humanoid. Many different types of humanoid are known to have existed at one time or another, the Neanderthal being the prime example. Other humanoids to have existed throughout history are the trolls, 
who stood at between 8 and 11 feet tall, and there are many other humanoids to have existed throughout the ages. A dog-like humanoid or a dog creature, still on its evolutionary journey towards becoming a fully-fledged humanoid, could be among them. Yvank was a strange cryptid that was said to live in the lakes across the British country of Wales, and was described as looking like a crocodile-beaver hybrid with the ability to shoot poison darts. Medieval records from the 15th century mentioned the Evanc numerous times, and it was said to be a monstrous creature that would devour anyone foolish enough to swim in or fall into its territory. One of the earliest descriptions of the Evanc is given by the 15th century poet Lewis Glyn Cothy, who described it as living in Lynn Syfadden, now Langorse Lake in Powys. Like many monsters written about in medieval times, it seems that there was only one specimen, or only one that was known about. It makes one wonder about what phenomenon was at work in those times, that could create monstrous, individual creatures. What is referred to as sorcery and magic today, could have in fact been a form of ancient science, now either forgotten about or forbidden. Could this ancient sorcery, or science, with its spells, or experiments, have been responsible for the creation of some of these frightening creatures? The Evanc was recorded as being killed in the story of Peridur, son of Ephrog, in which the creature was said to have the ability to turn invisible. Perhaps in actuality, the Evanc had chameleonic abilities, Use of what is referred to as an adder stone was required in order to make the creature visible. Upon doing so, Peridur was able to impale the beast with his sword, before slicing its head off. The adder stone could have in fact been a piece of now lost ancient technology, perhaps an infrared sensor that could detect the creature's body heat. With the Avanc dead, this was yet one more creature to be disposed of, one more monstrous experiment to be buried, but not completely. The story was rewritten as a fantastical tale, as the powers that be knew that letting the story live on as a fairy tale was a far more effective method of hiding the truth than attempting to eradicate it completely. The truth always finds its way to the surface, eventually. And making our way to the Southeast Asian country of the Philippines, we will attempt to catch a glimpse of the serpentine cryptid known as the Marcupo, which lives in the heavily forested mountains. The Marcupo is a deadly, venomous creature, with a red crest displayed prominently on its head, a long tongue with thorn-like hairs growing out of it, sharp tusks, and a demonic, forked tail. It is said that the Marcupo spits venom at anyone foolish enough to approach it, much like the Cobra. It is also known to have songbird-like qualities, and that it sings during quiet, peaceful days. The pleasant song doesn't make for a pleasant creature, however, and it will attack you ferociously if it spots you. Fresno, California, USA, there is a strange creature that appears to be all legs and little else, known as the Fresno Nightcrawler. One of the few cryptids to have been caught on film not once, but twice, the Nightcrawler is a truly odd-looking creature. Judging by this footage, taken on a home security system in Fresno, we can see that the creature is quite short, around 1.5 meters tall, with two legs that make up the majority of its height. Possesses no arms, has an extremely small body and a small head. It's extremely thin and its skin is white. Due to the poor quality of the footage, it's difficult to make out much in the way of detail. It is, however, still incredibly interesting, and we're most fortunate that real footage of this cryptid actually exists. More security footage, this time taken by cameras in Yosemite National Park, shows the Nightcrawler once again, this time a little more clearly. The same or a similar creature has also been reported in Poland, this time being recorded on a phone or handheld camera. 
It isn't visible for long, but can be seen here momentarily. Some say it's a cryptid, others say it's alien in origin. Some say both. Whatever it is, it's not something you want to come across while out for a pleasant nighttime stroll. Remaining in North America, we have another cryptid that looks a little more at home on Earth. That's not to say it isn't at all strange, however. The jackalope, its name a portmanteau of jackrabbit and antelope, is a rabbit-like cryptid with antelope-like horns. Said to be one of the fastest land animals on Earth, it also has a fierce reputation and is called the killer rabbit by some. They also have peculiar breeding habits, as they are said to only mate during electrical storms, explaining its rarity. In the town of Douglas, Wyoming, it's possible to obtain jackalope hunting licenses from the Douglas Chamber of Commerce, though the hunting of jackalopes is restricted to the hours of 12am to 2am and is only permitted on one day of the year, June 31st. In the Altamaha River in southern Georgia, USA, there is a cryptid known as the Altamaha, also called Alti. It was first discovered by the local Tama Native American tribe in the state of Georgia. The Altamaha is described as having a sturgeon-like body, with a bony ridge running along its back. It has front flippers and, interestingly, no back limbs. It swims like a dolphin in an undulating fashion and has a crocodilian snout. Some witnesses report its colouring as being grey with a whitish yellow underbelly, while others report that its skin is actually green in colour, which allows it to camouflage itself. South Georgia fishermen, beware. The Crocata is a vicious canine cryptid, a dog wolf, with origins in India as well as in the African country of Ethiopia. It has the body of an extremely large dog, sometimes said to be as large as a mule. Its head resembles that of a hyena. It has demonic cloven hooves, a horse-like mane and a tail similar to a lion's. Its fur ranges in colour from a yellowish orange to a brownish black and can include either spots or stripes. As if being a mule-sized, ferocious wolf wasn't frightening enough, it is also said to have the ability to mimic humans, the way parrots do, and uses this ability to lure its unsuspecting human prey towards it, usually by pretending to be a person in dire need of help. This hunting tactic is also used by another carnivorous canine cryptid, the Awi Zot, which is native to the countries of South America and was well known by the ancient Aztec and Mayan civilizations. The Crocata, similarly, was well known in Roman times, as the Roman historian Cassius Dio credited the Emperor Septimius Severus with bringing it from India to Rome. While not seen in the wild in the present day, it's highly likely that the Crocata is an extinct member of the Canis family. Or then again, it could just be an extremely rare creature, one that's still out there using its powers of mimicry to lure unsuspecting Good Samaritans to their doom. The Orabu, sometimes called the Orabon, is a weird fish-like creature which was said to live in the waters of Mount Marzuan, once known as Mount Orabu in present-day Palestine. It is said to be between 9 and 10 feet long, with a strange feline-like appearance and with plated scales, similar to the tatzel worm of the Swiss Alps. The French explorer André Thévet wrote about the Orabu in his Cosmography, and stated that the meat from this creature tasted absolutely foul, and that consuming it would result in kidney and bladder stones. Kune Kune, Japanese for wriggling body, is a deeply strange and unsettling humanoid, with white, paper-thin skin and with the most unnatural of movements. It is said to always be wiggling, as if being blown by the wind, even when no wind is present. 
Being a white-skinned, alien-looking humanoid, it's possible that the Kune Kune is related to the previously mentioned Fresno Nightcrawler. The Kune Kune is said to only appear on hot summer days and stands in the middle of extended rice fields. Witnesses in Japan state that the creature can only be seen from a distance and that people standing far away can observe field workers standing or walking right next to them, apparently completely unaware of their presence. Then again, some say that attempting to look at the Kune Kune up close will drive a person completely insane. Perhaps these creatures are known to the field workers, and that's why they seem to be taking no notice of them. To do so would be to lose their minds. If a person tries to touch the Kune Kune, it will kill them. Even observing them from a distance for too long could prove fatal. Perhaps that is why there are so few photos captured, and so few witnesses. We'll be remaining in Japan for now, my friend, as there is another cryptid here that I would like to tell you about. Tell me, traveller, how do you feel about snakes? How about giant ones? For your sake, dear friend, I hope snakes don't upset you too much, because the Yamakachi is just that. It lives in Mount Tsurugi, and while rare, is feared so much that most hikers and campers take weapons along with them to protect themselves while visiting the area. In 1973, a sighting was reported by a local worker, who stated that he saw a 10-foot-long black snake with a white underbelly, and not long after, several other sightings of the same giant snake were reported. The worker was fortunate enough to escape with his life, however the Yamakachi, at 10 feet in length and living in a prime hiking hotspot, has been managing to sustain itself somehow. A question we must ask ourselves, Traveller, is whether or not a special type of human being can be counted as a cryptid if they are thought to exist but are unconfirmed. Human beings with animal-like properties. Mystical beings with truly awesome powers. I am taking a great risk telling you about this one, Traveller, but I want you to have this knowledge, and I am fully prepared to face the consequences of my actions from here on should things take a sinister turn. Here goes. In many Native American legends, a skinwalker is a person with a special ability, at will, they have the ability to transform into any creature they desire. These people are talked about extensively in these old native legends. It is said that, in order to transform into a specific creature, the skinwalker must wear a pelt of said animal. They are, essentially, shapeshifters. The belief by many Native Americans in the skinwalker is so strong that they dislike the fact that skinwalkers appear in modern media, as mentioning them is thought to cause them to hunt down the person who mentions them. This is the same reason why they don't like talking about them with non-natives. And this is why I warned you before that I am taking a great risk by telling you about them. Skinwalkers are most frequently seen as a coyote, wolf, fox, eagle, owl or crow, likely because these are animals that have been found in the Americas for as long as the skinwalker has been in existence. But any skin of any animal can be used to transform. Their eyes are said to glow, even when in human form. Luckily for us, this means that they can be easily distinguished. When they have hunted down a victim, often for having merely mentioned their kind, they use a poisonous powder called corpse dust to kill them. The dust is made from the bones of dead infants, specifically the bones from the fingertips and the back of the skull. The reason for this, and what special properties fingertip and backs of skull bones may have, is unknown. It's a shame that the skinwalker doesn't use its powers for good. Instead, it uses them for evil. Papua New Guinea 
home to the Kayamunu, a living dinosaur. The Kayamunu is a strange hybrid of sauropod and theropod, possessing the long neck typical of Brachiosaurus and Apatosaurus, but unlike them, it walks on its hind legs. On its front legs, it has long, sharp claws. While the first sighting of this creature by humans is unknown, its most recent sighting took place in 2006. The Kayamunu has been compared to the thought-to-be-extinct Therizinosaurus, as the two creatures closely resemble one another. While it is considered unlikely to actually be a Therizinosaurus proper, it has been theorised that the Kayamunu is in fact one of its descendants. Some present-day animals remain more or less unchanged in appearance from their ancient ancestors. Sharks and crocodiles, for example, have retained most of their outward features since the days of prehistory, and have remained relatively unchanged, differing only in size and with some slight bodily changes. It could be that the Kayamunu is a direct descendant of the Therizinosaurus. Others speculate that, due to the creature walking on its hind legs, it could be a descendant of the raptor family of dinosaurs. The similarities are there. Raptors had a long neck, though not quite as long as the Kayamunu, walked on their hind legs and had claws on their front appendages. This modern-day dinosaur could be a highly evolved Velociraptor, changed by 65 million years of continued survival and evolution. In Java, Indonesia, there is a flying giant bat. When you think of giant bats, the golden-crowned flying fox may be what comes to mind. For this cryptid, however, you'll need to think bigger. The Ahul, named after the sound of its loud cry, is a giant bat-like creature that also possesses ape-like facial characteristics. It has large, dark eyes like that of a bat, and red-skinned wings. It has large, sharp claws on its forearms, and is covered with grey fur. Its wingspan can be up to an enormous 28 feet across. The Ahul mostly eats local fauna, such as large fish. However, if it happens to come across a human being, it will gladly take the opportunity to make a meal out of them. Meat is meat, after all. This cryptid is extremely aggressive and highly territorial, and will attack prey larger than itself, such as rhinos, if they unwittingly wander into its dominion. In 1925, Dr. Ernest Bartels, a naturalist, was exploring a waterfall in the Salic Mountains, when a giant unknown bat, the Ahul, flew directly over his head. Two years later, in 1927, Dr. Ernest Bartels encountered the Ahul again, one night, as he was lying in bed, inside his thatched house in western Java, he listened to the sounds of the jungle as he did every night. All of a sudden, Dr. Bartles heard an unusual sound, something very different from what he would usually hear, coming from above his hut. A loud cry that seemed to utter, Ahool. Brazil, home to a great number of frightening cryptids. You've heard of werewolves, humans who, when the moon is full, transform into wolf-like humanoids. Brazil probably has these, just like most other countries of the world. But as well as werewolves, it also has something else, similar in many ways. The Cape Lobo, a human that, at certain times, takes on anteater-like characteristics. Standing at seven feet tall, and with a powerful, muscular build, these creatures are not something that you'd want to come across in the Brazilian rainforest on your own. Their fur is thick and matted, their skin extremely tough, armor-like, and able to withstand gunfire. They have long, razor-sharp claws. They have strangely shaped, round feet, almost hoof-like, that leaves strange tracks not unlike a glass bottle that has been pressed into the ground. The Cape Lobo stinks. 
It has a foul odor, powerful enough to stun its opponents. It has a shrill cry that can be heard up to 10 miles away, and has been known to send hunters and explorers to the brink of insanity. It has a ravenous appetite, and uses its long snout to suck the brains out of its victims' skulls in a mosquito-like fashion. A huge, hulking, vampiric brute with a putrid stench and a cry that causes all to hear it to lose their minds. No thank you. Remaining in South America, in the small country of Patagonia, we have a half-fox, half-serpent hybrid. Highly aggressive and larger than a puma, this cryptid uses its flat yet muscular and unusually large tail to crush its victims to death, after which it drags their carcass away to its lair to be devoured. As is often the case with cryptids, and the brave explorers who put their lives on the line to discover them and show them to the world, Florentino Amagino was met with outright scorn from the scientific community when he proposed that the creature existed and was possibly connected to the Mylodon, a giant ground sloth thought to be extinct, which Amagino believed was still alive in the region. Many Patagonian natives knew of the existence of this creature, but, always knowing better, the open-minded scientists of the mainstream completely disregarded their testimony. Some things never change, do they, Traveller? In Lake Tota, Colombia, the legendary Diablo Ballena, or the monster of Lake Tota, lurks in the deep. Oftentimes, lake monsters resemble the extinct plesiosaur, the most notable example being the Loch Ness Monster, and another being the monster of Lake Champlain, known as Champ. The monster of Lake Tota, however, is quite different. The creature's Spanish name, Diablo Ballena, means Demon Whale. Described as a fish with a black head like an ox and larger than a whale, by conquistador Gonzalo Jimenez de Quesada, it was also referred to as a black monster and the dragon. The native Muisca people of Colombia have passed down stories of the Lake Tota monster for centuries. In the 1600s, the creature became known to the Western world through Spanish colonial settlers who brought stories of the beast back with them to Europe. In 1852, Manuel Ancizar, a Colombian writer, politician, and teacher, recorded the monster in his book, The Pilgrimage Alpha for the Northern Provinces of New Granada, referring to it as the Freshwater Devil. The last sighting of the monster of Lake Tota took place in the 19th century. Is the creature undergoing a centuries-long period of hibernation? Has it perhaps reached the end of its life cycle and passed away? Possibly. Or maybe, it's still out there, lurking deep within the dark waters of Lake Tota. The Adaro. A humanoid sea dweller. A mer-person. Highly aggressive and highly dangerous. Said to live in the waters off the coast of the Solomon Islands. They have gills behind their ears and tail fins instead of feet. Some descriptions mention a shark dorsal fin-like horn, and a spear growing out of its head like a swordfish. Stories of the ancient sunken city of Atlantis have been passed down for millennia. Is it possible that the Adaro makes its home there? Are the few Adaro to have been witnessed by humans, perhaps Atlantean explorers, who are venturing to the surface to try and observe us, and determine just how much of a threat human beings are to them? They are said to arise from the evil in a person's spirit. Is this a cryptic way of saying that they know just how evil human beings can be? If they're wise, they'll continue to give the human race a wide berth. Like the Earth's natural water bodies, 
The Earth's forests are home to a great many cryptids too. The Splinter Cat, a large feline found all across North America from the Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean and all the way down to the Gulf. It has also been reported in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. The Splinter Cat has a particularly destructive method of finding food. It feeds mostly on raccoons and honey. In order to find these favorite foods, which are often found inside the hollow trunks of trees, it takes a long run up to a tree which has a beehive or a raccoon inside it. The creature then lowers its extremely hard head and charges full speed into the tree's trunk. It hits the tree with such immense force that it often knocks the entire tree down, exposing the delicious honey or tasty raccoon within, which it then devours. It then leaves the area, which by this point has been more or less leveled, like a tornado has hit. Splinter Cat Creek, in the northern Cascade Range of Oregon, USA, is named after this legendary animal. The Caribbean Paradise for some, but tropical regions tend to give rise to extreme examples of wildlife. Its waters are crystal clear, but that does nothing to shed light on this bizarre and, quite frankly, horrifying cryptid. The Lusca, similar in some ways to the Kraken, and frequently reported in an area known as Blue Holes. It has the tentacles. But, this gigantic cephalopod is also said to have the head of a shark. Cryptozoologists are divided on this. Some believe that the creature is in fact a strange, unnatural hybrid of the two creatures, created by some unknown force or phenomenon. Others state that, like the Kraken, the Lusker is a gigantic octopus and the shark's head has simply been added over the years as the legend has been passed down. In January 2011, a Lusker's carcass washed up on a beach in the Bahamas. Eyewitnesses state that the remains were only partial, and local fishermen estimated that they would have belonged to an octopus-like creature around 20 to 30 feet in length. The Lusker is said to grow to around 70 feet in length, indicating that the specimen that washed up in the Bahamas in 2011 was only a juvenile. The Shunka Warakin is a large canine. It resembles a wolf or a hyena, or an animal species with similarities to both. Its name means carries off dogs. This gives us an idea of just how large this cryptid is. The creature frequently appears in Native American legend, and some cryptozoologists believe it can be explained by prehistoric mammals, such as hyenodons or dire wolves, having survived and lived for much longer than is currently accepted by mainstream Western science. Formerly classified prehistoric animals have been proven to still exist, as we know with the coelacanth, and prehistoric animals like sharks and crocodilians continued to live on throughout the eons. If these animals could do it, so could the hyenodon, or the shunka warakin as it's become known. Texas in the 1800s was a violent and lawless place. Bandits ruled the day and would take what they wanted by any means necessary. During this time in San Antonio, there was a Mexican bandit known only as Vidal. He had survived his chosen lifestyle for quite a while and had found success as a skilled thief. But all things come to an end eventually, don't they, Traveller? The bandits were violent men, but the Texas Rangers, whose job it was to bring law and order to the region, were just as brutal. Vidal committed a crime that would put him on the radar of one Creed Taylor, a tough Texas Ranger. Vidal often engaged in the practice of horse rustling, and one day he made the mistake of raiding a ranch owned by Creed Taylor, taking several of his horses. This crime would be the beginning of the end for old Vidal. Taylor eventually tracked down Vidal and his men to their hideout, and waited with his fellow rangers for the bandits to fall asleep at nightfall. 
Once they had put their fire out and retired for the night, the rangers ambushed the sleeping thieves and took them into custody. Creed Taylor was a man with revenge on his mind, brutal revenge at that. He and his men killed Vidal and every one of his henchmen. It was, however, the treatment of Vidal's corpse that angered his spirit and gave birth to El Muerto. Vidal's body was beheaded and then tied securely to his horse, along with his severed head. The horse was then set free to roam the desert, with the decaying corpse strapped to its back, rotting away more and more with each slowly passing, blazing hot day, a truly sickening spectacle that horrified all who came across it. Such degrading treatment of his body didn't sit well with Vidal's spirit, it would seem. He came back to roam the deserts once again. Spotted many times by bandits, lawmen and passers-by, it was said that bullets had no effect on this terrifying spectre, and the legend of El Muerto began to spread across the country. His headless body was eventually captured and buried in the desert, unceremoniously, which did nothing to calm his vengeful spirit. One couple, travelling between San Diego and San Antonio in 1917, witnessed El Muerto as he passed them on his horse, his severed head screaming, It is mine, it is all mine, before riding off into the night. <laughs> The Felixstowe Fire Demon, a humanoid cryptid with only one known sighting which took place in Felixstowe, England in September of 1965. The only known witness to the Felixstowe Fire Demon's appearance was a Michael Johnson, who was riding in a car one night with two friends, passenger Mavis Fordyce and driver George Maskey. Mr. Maskey had pulled up at the curb on an isolated road, Walton Avenue, and the three were engaged in lively conversation when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the passenger, Mr. Johnson, abruptly swung his car door open and walked out into the dark and murky night. Fordyce and Maskey exchanged perplexed glances, but simply assumed Maskey had gone out into the trees to relieve himself. Mere moments after Johnson had left the car, the two passengers began to hear a strange, high-pitched humming sound. The sound, unlike anything they had heard before, began to grow louder and louder, becoming impossible to ignore and overwhelming them. Mr. Maskey leaned out of his car window to try and ascertain what exactly the noise was and where it was coming from. It was then that he spotted an orange, oval-shaped object in the sky, about 90 feet above his car. Was this a UFO? Or was it the Felixstowe fire demon coming in for a landing? Maskey and Fordyce then jumped out of the car and went looking for Johnson, who they eventually found passed out on the ground. When Johnson regained consciousness the next morning, he told his two friends and the attending doctor that he had felt compelled to walk off into the woods by some unknown force, and that when he had been walking for an indeterminate amount of time, he had been met by a humanoid being with sloping, glowing eyes and was completely engulfed in flames. He had no recollection of what took place during the meeting, and the Felixstowe fire demon, to our knowledge, has not been seen again since. There are so many reports of Bigfoot-like creatures all over the world that they are becoming difficult to ignore and brush off. The Mogollon Monster is, like most ape men, over seven feet tall, bipedal and covered with fur. This one has large red eyes which are said to be wild and feral-like. It has a strong odour which is said to be a mix of dead fish, skunk, decaying peat moss, the musk of a snapping turtle, and bad B.O. This cryptid should not be approached, as it is highly violent and volatile, not at all keen on humans or any outsider, and is omnivorous, meaning that humans are very much on the menu. Its most frequent prey, however, is deer, which it captures, then decapitates, before consuming. I've said it before, Traveller, and I'll say it again. Everything is bigger in the Congo. 
This snake is thought to be a rare variety of python which grows to incredible sizes. It has also been theorised that it could be a surviving Gigantophis, a prehistoric giant snake. It wouldn't be the only surviving prehistoric animal that inhabits the dense forests of the Congo. The creature was first spotted in 1959 by Belgian Air Force Colonel Remy van Leerd, who noticed it while flying over the forests of the Katanga region. He described it as having dark green skin with brown top scales, and upon circling back to take another look at it, the gigantic serpent raised itself upward, looking as though it were ready to strike Van Leerd's aircraft. At this point, he noticed that the creature's underbelly was whitish in colour. It was around 50 feet in length, 2 feet wide and had a triangular, 3 feet long head. Human prey would be just the right size for this enormous super python, which may account for the lack of witnesses. Beautiful, majestic, dangerous. A giant bird that lives all across Central and South America, with two types, one that eats gold and another that eats silver. Depending on which one it eats, its feathers will develop either a silver or gold-coloured hue. Why does the Alicanto eat gold or silver? Nobody knows for certain. Perhaps it has evolved in such a way because eating these elements guarantees a lack of competition. This could also be a much more extreme version of magpie-like behaviour. Magpies collect shiny objects to decorate their nests with to attract mates. The Alicanto may be a much more evolved version of this type of bird, with a combination of magpie hoarding tendencies and the peacock's display behaviour of colourful feathers. Could mean that the Alicanto has evolved to eat gold and silver to give itself a silvery or golden coat of feathers, with the most striking feathers attracting a mate. They are said to bring good luck to those who spot them, as long as they are not spotted in turn. If they are, the Alicanto will, instead of leading the person to gold, lead them onto a dangerous cliff top or ravine, where the unfortunate pursuer will lose their footing and perish. A sea serpent that makes its home in Cadborough Bay, British Columbia. It is said to have an elongated body, an equine-like head and long flippers on its neck and sides for underwater propulsion. This cryptid was first spotted over 200 years ago and has been sighted over 300 times since. The last sighting took place in 2009 when a man by the name of Kelly Nash briefly caught the Cadborosaurus on camera, as can be seen here. There have been two live captures of juvenile Cadborosauri, one in 1968 near De Corsi Island, and another in 1991, when a woman named Phyllis Harsh captured a baby measuring around two feet wide before returning it to the water off John's Island. The Gugu, also known as the Cuckoo, is a gigantic humanoid cryptid, usually described as possessing female attributes, that is said to prey on and eat humans. It lives in the sea and is covered with scales. It would seem to possess a high level of intelligence, as it carries a large bag over its shoulder which it uses to transport its human prey. There are many humanoids said to live in the world's oceans, some are roughly the same size as a human being, while others, like the Ninjen or the Gugu, are giants. Giants also used to live on land, like the trolls, and there are probably many other humanoids that the powers that be don't want us to know about. The Gugu was said by the French 16th century explorer Samuel de Champlin to have captured and eaten many Native Americans in the years before his arrival. an ape man that makes its home in the Australian outback. One of the world's many undiscovered ape men, the Yowie is typical in that like many Bigfoot-type cryptids, and the previously mentioned Mogion monster, it stands at between 6 and 12 feet tall and is covered almost entirely with hair. 
Its nose is flat and wide, and its footprints are much larger than that of a human. The first sighting of a Yowie by Westerners is said to have taken place in 1795, with Aboriginal stories of the creature going back hundreds, possibly thousands of years. The Australian outback is an enormous area, with more than 2.5 million square miles of desert and tropical regions in the north and south. One of the most sparsely populated places on Earth, it could easily be home to a great number of undiscovered species, like the Yowie. It has a casket-shaped body between 6 and 8 feet in length, and has long, wobbly legs that cause it to sway unsteadily as it walks. The strange beast was first reported by some Mormon emigrants, who observed a procession entering the desert from a certain mountain range, afterward named the Funeral Mountains. They are said to live in the higher areas of the mountain range, where they spend most of their lives until they're gripped by a strange desire to leave their home in large numbers and attempt to cross the desert. A journey that it never survives. The extreme heat from the desert sun is said to kill them rather quickly, being acclimated to the cold mountain air. They collapse onto the sand, where their bodies swell up and explode, leaving large grave-shaped holes in the sand. The Flying Ray, with grey skin and with a wingspan greater than a two-lane road, was spotted in December of 2004 by a man and a woman on a clear night when it glided over the Ohio River. Was this a new cryptid, an actual flying ray? Or was this event that took place in 2004 in Point Pleasant actually a Mothman sighting? It would be easy to misinterpret what was seen if the sighting took place at night. Or perhaps it was a flying ray. With no further sightings reported since 2004, we may never know for certain. A twisted humanoid said to guard the entrance to a warlock's cave in Chile, the same warlock who kidnapped him as a child. When the Imbunche was a three-month-old baby, the warlock took him from his parents, forked his tongue, broke his right leg and bent it backwards behind his head, and applied a special cream to his back to make him grow thick hair. The warlock fed the infant exclusively on black cat milk and goat meat, before moving on to decayed human flesh from local graveyards. As a result of the Warlock's magic, the Imbunche became the guardian of the Warlock's cave, where it would stay until the Warlock was chased away or his cave was destroyed by angry locals. Throughout hundreds of years of guarding the cave, the Imbunche acquired a wealth of magical knowledge and can act as an advisor to the Warlock. As a way of scaring the townspeople in times past, the Warlock, or Warlocks, would carry the Imbunche through town while it thrashed and screamed, and the Warlocks would announce doom and misfortune to everyone within earshot. A pterosaur that makes its home on New Guinea Island, Papua New Guinea, its name when translated means Demon Flyer. The Ropen is described as being featherless and to have a wingspan of 12 feet or more, both hallmarks of the prehistoric pterosaur. Unlike the ancient pterosaur, however, the Ropen is said to exhibit bioluminescence, glowing as it glides across the night sky. It subsists mainly on fish, again, like its prehistoric ancestors, though it has also been reported to consume rotting human flesh, primarily through grave robbing. As is often the case with cryptids, those who wish to cover up the Ropen's existence began circulating rumours that the creature is merely a story cooked up by creationists. However, this is patently false, as it is a matter of record that the Ropen was first spotted in 1935 by famous biologist and entomologist Evelyn Cheeseman, who was held in very high regard in the scientific community at the time. If we can't trust a respected scientist, 
then who can we trust? Moving across now to the Congo, Central Africa, home to quite possibly the most surviving dinosaur species on the planet. Home to the infamous Mokele Mbembe and the terrifying Kasai Rex, the deep, dark jungles of the Congo are a place where time stands still. Though saying this, the dinosaurs and pterosaurs of the Congo, while resembling their prehistoric ancestors, have had tens of millions of years worth of isolation and evolution directing their course. The Nguma Monene, a serpent-like creature that dwells in the Congo's swampy areas, is between 30 and 50 feet long, amphibious, is greyish-brown in colour, and has a serrated ridge along its spine. Is the Nguma Monene a highly evolved Spinosaur? Possibly. The Spinosaurus lived in Africa, not far from the present-day Congo. It could be that the Spinosaurus survived for a while longer than previously thought, and has spent millions of years becoming the present-day Nguma Monene. While the Amela Ntuka seems to be an evolved ceratopsid, with possible ancestors including the Styracosaurus or the Triceratops, this cryptid dino is by no means a peaceful herbivore. The name Amela Ntuka, when translated, means elephant killer. It is slightly larger than an African elephant, which it actively hunts and kills, and weighs around six tons. Its body is similar in shape to the rhinoceros, but with a large, heavy tail, and shares its characteristic long horn on its snout. According to eyewitness reports, it has no frills on its neck. It could be that, with less large carnivorous predators around after the cataclysmic extinction level event that killed most of the dinosaurs, the ceratopsid from whence the Amela Ntuka came may have evolved in such a way as to lose its frills and become more rhino-like in appearance. Not all prehistoric herbivores have taken a carnivorous evolutionary turn, however. The Mahuru, which makes its home in the African country of Kenya, is most likely descended from the Stegosaurs, judging by its appearance. The Mahuru possesses similar bony plates that run along its back and down to the tip of its tail, like the Stegosaurus. At the tip of its tail, where the Stegosaurus possessed a Thagomyzer, the Mahuru has a bony club, which is more in line with the Ankylosaurus. Is it an evolved stegosaur that developed a club over millions of years? Or is it an ankylosaur that developed bony plates? Until a specimen can be captured, we may never know. In the Andaman Islands, near India, the Jiamu haunts the forests, killing anyone and anything that it comes across. It was first written about in the Myths and Legends of the Andamans in 1922 by A. R. Radcliffe Brown. Said to be a theropod and possessing a large, green, frilly collar, it would seem that the Jiamu is a surviving Dilophosaurus, or a relative thereof. Tens of millions of years of evolution seems to have granted the Jiamu's skin with a fluorescent tint, similar to the bioluminescence present in the previously mentioned Ropen. While not much information is available on this dino cryptid, we do know that it's still very much feared by the Andamanese natives. Heading now to the United States of America, we'll be looking at a dino cryptid that was sighted in July of 2008 in Georgia. An 18-year-old man and his grandfather were out deer hunting one night when they came across an animal that they described as looking like a raptor from the popular Jurassic Park movies. The witnesses reported that the creature appeared about 150 feet in front of them and was around 5 feet high at the shoulder. Believing that the creature looked like it was a fast runner, with its strong hind legs, they remained perfectly still and observed it for a short time. It seemed to, shortly after appearing, 
raise its head and sniff the air, probably detecting the two witnesses who were only a stone's throw away from it. It then turned and ran back into the bushes, and as far as we know, it hasn't been seen again since. The Areca monster is yet another surviving raptor, with this one making its home in the baking hot Atacama Desert of Chile. The South American continent is said to be home to a number of living dinosaurs. This one is said to be six feet tall, bipedal, and possess extremely sharp teeth. It leaves three toed footprints in the desert sands, and lives in caves near water sources where it can stay cool. While some describe it as a dog-faced lizard, the majority believe it to be a surviving member of the Dromaeosaurid family of dinosaurs. The creature was first spotted in 1980, but a great number of reports were made in 2004 by members of a large local family. Back in the United States, in Lake Champlain, which sits on the border between the US and Canada, we have a plesiosaur-like cryptid which has been described as America's Loch Ness Monster, and is affectionately referred to as Champ. I know what you're thinking, Traveller. Technically, plesiosaurs are not dinosaurs, and of course you're correct, but a prehistoric beast is a prehistoric beast, and frankly, plesiosaurs are pretty cool. While there is no hard scientific evidence for Champ's existence, there have been many sightings and a 1977 photograph, seen here, taken by amateur photographer Sandra Mincy, has been called Champ's version of the surgeon's photograph, the most iconic image of the Loch Ness Monster. The creature was even caught on film in 2005 by two fishermen, Dick Affalter and his stepson Pete Burdett. Watch this footage and judge for yourself, Traveller. In South America, there is a large carnivore, which is between 20 and 25 feet long. It has a short snout, but a tall head. It has thick skin, tough and arrow-proof, meaning the South American natives of times past had quite the fight on their hands whenever they came across one. It eats tapirs and capybaras, but has also been known to kill and eat humans. With its two horns on either side of its head, it can mean only one thing. The Stoa, as it's known today, is a surviving Carnotaurus. In Partridge Creek, an area within Yukon Territory, Canada, we have what many believe to be a surviving Ceratosaurus. An enormous 50 feet long and weighing around 40 tons, this carnivorous monster is the bane of the local moose and caribou herd's existence. It has razor-sharp teeth, boar-like bristly hair and is a solid black colour, which allows it to blend in perfectly with the dark forested areas it calls its home. It leaves footprints that are five feet long, two and a half feet wide, and has claws that are around one foot long each. The Partridge Creek Beast has been spotted twice that we know of, once in 1903 and again in 1907, but hasn't been seen again since. In this footage, taken in 2013 by a group of film students who are out on the water filming for a project, we can see an unidentified creature as it makes its way across the lock and between the small boats being used by the students. Only the top of the creature can be seen, and experts who have viewed the footage state that the way it moves through the water is not whale or dolphin-like, or anything like they know of. What is this creature? Some type of sea serpent? Or is it something else entirely? Watch this footage, my friend, and judge for yourself. The 
In the Timor Sea, there is a shark larger than a great white, averaging 15 feet in length. At this size, it is only natural that the Timor Sea ground shark would be a man-eater. It lies in wait on the ocean floor, staying perfectly still, waiting for a large fish to pass it by which it then devours. It's brown in colour and has no dorsal fin, which allows it to stand out and remain unseen while it lies flat on the sandy sea bottom. It has also been known to attack waders and fishermen in tide pools. Some say it's a large, undiscovered form of wobbegong shark, while others say it's a new species altogether. What do you think, Traveller? Terrifying giant humanoid dwells in the seas off Japan, where it usually emerges during violent storms to attack and sink ships. Their skin varies from grey to jet black in colour. They have bald heads and are also sometimes said to be covered in extremely fine hair and to have serpentine limbs. They seem to vary in size. Some say they are only a few inches long, though others have reported seeing specimens the size of mountains. They bear many similarities to another gigantic ocean-dwelling humanoid, the Ninjen, also of Japan, which seems to differ only in skin colour. The Ninjen is white. Could it be that the Ninjen and the Umibozu are different forms of the same creature? And being humanoid in physical form, could they, somehow, be related to us. It is considered an evil spirit by the Inuits. It can be recognized by its footprints, wolf-like tracks that lead into and out of the icy waters of the Arctic Sea. The Aklut is a vicious and dangerous creature, and has been known to emerge from the sea and attack sleeping villagers on freezing cold nights before dragging them away and down into the icy depths before devouring them. This cryptid seems to prefer a warmer climate and so makes its home in and around the Cape Verde Islands off the coast of Africa. It is semi-aquatic in nature, resembling a crocodile in some ways, but also having some monitor-like qualities and is also serpent-like as well, with its long, blue snake-like tongue. Like the crocodile, it uses a death roll to kill its prey, though the Koakun Kloon first drags its unfortunate meal deep underwater before doing this. They have lungs, and so they can be seen leaping out of the water for air. Sightings go back to the 15th century, when they were sometimes spotted by crew members on board Spanish and Portuguese sailing vessels, which they could break in half by torpedoing through the water at up to 100 miles an hour. We know that jellyfish can grow to enormous sizes, the most notable example being the lion's mane jellyfish, with the largest known specimen possessing a bell measuring 7 feet across and with tentacles measuring an incredible 120 feet in length. If jellyfish can grow this large, then why couldn't they grow larger still? A young man in Japan once called the police to report that a giant jellyfish, the size of a large car, had eaten his family while they were swimming in shallow water at the beach. The young man was promptly arrested for murder, as the police believed that he had killed his family and made the story up. However, upon taking a polygraph test, he was found not to be lying. And also, if you were going to commit a crime like murder, wouldn't you come up with something a little more easy for the police to believe? Being eaten by a giant jellyfish, to most people, would seem highly improbable but it seems that this tragic event actually did occur. Seen only a handful of times in the 16th century and only in the Baltic Sea, then known as the Sarmatian Sea, 
The Sarmatian sea snail was a truly odd creature. It was quite large, said to be as thick as a wine cask, with paws, antlers, and, unlike all other known snail species, eyes that actually sat on its head instead of on long optical stalks. Its shell seemed to be the only gastropod-like feature it possessed. Its eyes were said to glow like candles, and its flesh was said to be very tasty. Is it possible that this giant cryptid sea snail was hunted to extinction for its tasty meat? With only one sighting ever made by a German explorer named Georg Wilhelm Steller in 1741, the Steller sea ape is about five feet long with a dog-like head. It had a shark-like tail and was covered with thick greyish hair with a reddish-coloured abdomen. There is also a possible second sighting which took place in 1969, in which sailor Miles Smeaton witnessed the creature while sailing in the Aleutian Islands. He recorded his sighting in his book Misty Islands, and upon reading about the Stellar's sea ape at a later date, realized that it was the very same beast he too had witnessed. Is yet another undiscovered giant shark, which lives off the coast of Isla de Malpelo in the eastern Pacific Ocean. It grows to around 15 feet in length, like the previously mentioned Timor Sea ground shark, and is larger than the Great White. Its dorsal fin is situated above its pectoral fins, and it prefers to live in the colder waters, around 160 feet below the surface, which may account for the small number of sightings. Sandra Basudo, a Colombian biologist and park director, came face to face with the Malpelo monster in 2001, during what seemed at first to be an ordinary dive. Upon seeing this unidentified shark, she was driven to organize an expedition at the beginning of 2002 to locate this mysterious monster shark, during which she and her crew were attacked by vicious pirates and had the misfortune of encountering a violent storm which wiped out access to where the shark was said to have its lair. As of now, the Malpelo monster remains undiscovered, but with technology always improving, and with many marine biologists itching to go deeper into the brine than ever before to make new discoveries, it is only a matter of time before this huge mega shark is found once and for all. Ayin Milo is a sea serpent, with several possible explanations as to what it is. Some say it's a surviving prehistoric marine creature. Others say it's a sea dragon. Like other surviving creatures from prehistory, like the Ropan and the Kayamunu, the Ain Milo makes its home in Papua New Guinea and is most often seen just off the coast. It is said to be around 50 feet in length with a python-like head. Its neck is between 10 and 15 feet long and 2 feet in length and is reported to be blue or grey-green in colour. There are many reports of surviving prehistoric marine creatures, the Loch Ness Monster being the most notable example. But as well as Nessie, there are countless others, such as Champ, Bo Nessie, Nahuelito, and the Turtle Lake Monster. It could simply be that the Ayin Milo is just one of many survivors from the prehistoric age who we, unknowingly, share the planet with. Native to Iceland, the shell monster is a bear-like animal, the size of a hippo, with blue scales similar to those of a pangolin. It is often described as having seaweed and shells covering it, and it has long claws, used to hold onto rocks at the bottom of the sea. In the 18th, 19th and first half of the 20th century, many stories of this creature were told, but now, almost none are told, hinting that perhaps the shell monsters may have fallen into extinction. It's a large, fearsome bird from North American lumberjack folklore during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. 
The Milano was a huge crane that was reportedly so large that it would eat snakes the size of a car tire. It was also known to live on a diet of giant worms that lived in giant worm holes. One story told of a Milano that had difficulty trying to catch and eat giant worms. When it pinched one in its beak and pulled back, the worm would hold on tight in its hole and its body would stretch like an elastic band. The bird pulled some more, and when the worm was really thin, it let go and flew out of its hole like an arrow from a bow, and it hit the Milamo bird in the eye. The Milamo loosened its grip in its shock of being hit, and the worm dove back into its hole as fast as it came out. The Ancient Bestiaries of China They are said to inhabit the Raucous River, near Trickling Brilliance Mountain. This fish had ten bird-like wings, and it was believed that eating the meat of the Shishi Gi Yu could cure illnesses, as well as its oils, which are said to do the same. The Agogwe is a humanoid creature spotted in the forests and jungles of East Africa. It was first sighted in 1900 by Captain William Hitchens, but was reported 37 years later in the December issue of the Discovery magazine. It usually stands from 1 to 1.7 meters, or 2 to 5 feet, with several human features. The creature is also said to have odd characteristics, such as long arms and rusty colored hair covering its body, with yellowish red skin under its coat. Its feet are roughly 12 centimetres long. The differences between the Agogwe and a modern chimpanzee is that the Agogwe has a rounded forehead, smaller but sharper teeth, and the hair and skin colour also. The first recorded sighting of the Agogwe was in 1900 by Captain William Hitchens, but the incident was reported 37 years later in the December issue of Discovery magazine. He was apparently in the Ashur and Simbit forests, located on the western side of the Wembe Plains in Tanzania. Some years ago, I was sent on an official lion hunt in this area. While waiting in a forest glade for a man-eater, I saw two small, brown, furry creatures come from the dense forest on one side of the glade, and then disappear into the thicket on the other side. They were like little men, about four feet high, walking upright but clad in russet hair. The native hunter with me gazed in mingled fear and amazement. The Agogwe may be a surviving species of Australopithecine, a primate which lived 2.5 million years ago as a very early form of humans. Crawfordsville Monster is an atmospheric beast that was sighted over Crawfordsville, Indiana, USA in 1891. The citizens of Crawfordsville described a violently flapping thing with a flaming red eye, 20 feet long and 8 feet wide. Descriptions of the creature vary, with some accounts suggesting it had no head, and others describing it as having glowing red eyes and hot breath. Accounts generally agree that it is a large creature, eel-like in appearance, with several undulating fins down the sides of its body. During a reported second appearance, witnesses describe the creature as writhing and squirming, and producing a wheezing sound as if it were in pain. One of the strangest accounts was when a Methodist pastor named Reverend G. W. Switzer and his wife also saw the animal. The creature writhed as though in great pain, squirmed in agony, and sounded a wheezing, plaintive noise as it hovered at 300 feet. What is strange about the creature is that it has an eye in its mouth, three jaws, and it appears to be a cyclops. It also seems to be eel-like in shape, with feathery protrusions coming out the sides and back. The Aldini monster was a lost species of chameleon from Tanzania. They were brown with small red spots and a horizontal stripe across each flank. It had a small horn at the tip of its snout and had a long tail. 
On February 25th, 1962, Peter Scott and John and Jane Hunter saw a large chameleon near Aldini Peak, Tanzania. They captured it, and Scott took it back to England, where it lived for a full 18 months. Its remains were preserved for a short time, with Scott taking them to several herpetology experts who were unable to determine the animal's identity. The remains of the chameleon were unfortunately lost at some point afterwards. The North Shore Monster is the name given to a cryptid from Utah's Great Salt Lake. In the 1840s, a certain Brother Bainbridge reported seeing a monster with a dolphin-like body in the lake near Antelope Island. At dusk or evening of the early summer of 1877, J. H. McNeil of Kelton, Box Elder County, and several other employees of the Barnes & Co. Salt Works Company on the lake's north shore reported seeing a huge creature with a crocodile-like body and the head of a horse in the waters of the Great Salt Lake. The creature made a fearsome bellowing noise and charged the workers, who promptly ran up a nearby hillside and hid in the brush until morning. Wood Booger is a Bigfoot-like creature said to roam the forests of southwest Virginia in the United States. The name Wood Booger was given to the creature because it was often rumoured to carry off young children like the Boogeyman. This cryptid was featured in the Animal Planet TV show Finding Bigfoot, episode Virginia is for Bigfoot Lovers. There have been a particularly large amount of sightings outside the town of Saltville, Virginia. Since this visit, the city of Norton has had many attractions named after the wood booger. This city has also been named as a sanctuary for it. Since 2014, an annual festival is held where visitors can go on guided tours to search for the creature. A statue of the wood booger is located at the Flag Rock Overlook. The wood booger bar and grill is named after the creature, and many local businesses sell wood booger merchandise. The Dover Demon is a small humanoid, reported from Dover, Massachusetts, USA. It was the subject of an intensive scare during the 70s, when multiple witnesses came forward with their sightings. The Dover Demon is described as looking sort of like the grey variety of alien, except that it has skin of a rosy orange instead of sickly grey. The Dover Demon has a large head on a small, stick-like body. It can be bipedal, but often travels on all fours and switches back and forth between the two modes of locomotion. It has eyes that glow orange or green, and does not seem to wear any clothing. The creature designated Organism 46b was an aquatic beast captured by a Russian scientific team near the research outpost Vostok Station. Organism 46b was an enormous 10 meter long, 14 tentacled squid-like creature which lived in Lake Vostok, a subglacial lake located under two miles of ice beneath Vostok Station in the Antarctic. The animal had limbs that were animate and aggressive even after amputation, could release a toxin into the water to immobilize its prey from a distance of up to 150 feet, displayed an astonishing degree of shape-shifting, and showed a considerable degree of both hostility and intelligence. Vostok Station, established by the Soviets in 1957, was discovered to have been sighted atop a vast body of liquid water beneath the ice, which was subsequently named Lake Vostok after the station. Dr. Anton Padalka claims to have been part of the first scientific expedition to explore the lake. We encountered Organism 46b on our first day. It disabled our radio, which we later learned, to our alarm, was intentional. It is also able to paralyze prey from a distance of up to 150 feet by releasing its venom into the water. Tragically, my colleague and lifelong friend was killed this way. 
Later, while diving in the lake, the group was attacked. The creature released its venom, which took hold of one of them. The organism then proceeded to kill and eat him. As Padalka stated, he tread water wearing a blissful smile as the organism approached him. We watched helplessly as it used its arms to tear off his head, then it popped his remains in its mouth. It was as if it had hypnotised him telepathically. Escaping the creature, a member of the team managed to lop off one of its tentacles, although the severed limb attacked the group again. Later that night, it slid across the ice bank and strangled her, stated Padalka. After finally trapping the creature in a tank, the surviving members of the team brought it to the surface, where they claim Russian officials seized the beast and told the international press that nothing had been found. In 1996, General Motors workers cleaning a sludge pit at the GMC Delphi Interior and Lighting Plant in Anderson, Indiana, USA, found strange small squids of an inch and a half in diameter and six to eight inches in length, swimming around inside a chemical sludge pit amongst oil, antifreeze and other chemicals used to make plastic car parts. One was caught and put in a jar and stored at the factory, but disappeared before any further research could be done. No more specimens were found, even after the pit was cleaned and inspected. The Menehune are a race of pygmy people said to live in the deep forests and hidden valleys of the Hawaiian Islands. The Menehune people stand two to three feet tall, and their favourite foods are said to be bananas and fish. In legends, it is said that the Menehune built temples, fish ponds, roads, canoes, and houses. Some of these structures still exist, and the craftsmanship is evident. They are said to have lived in Hawaii before settlers arrived from Polynesia many centuries ago. Some early scholars theorised that there was a first settlement of Hawaii by settlers from the Marquesas Islands and a second from Tahiti. The Manahune then fled to the mountains, and only rare sightings of their people have been reported since. Air rods, also known as flying rods or skyfish, have never actually been seen with the naked eye, but have instead been picked up by camera footage all over the world. Air rods were first discovered in the 1990s, when people started to find that films of all types, ranging from home videos to Hollywood movies, had odd disturbances that looked something like blurry rods that were mostly transparent, or occasionally whitish in colour. Most of these disturbances were fast moving and barely visible to the eye. They tend to show up best against large, featureless areas, such as the sky, People soon found that these rods were widespread. Countless films had them lurking almost imperceptibly in the corners, including old television shows, movies, sporting events, almost anything caught on film. There were simply too many examples to study them all, running into the tens of thousands. And there were also air rods visible in photographs. They looked like uniform cylinders, with pairs of appendages along the length. In some air rods, these appendages looked like fins that vibrate rapidly along the entire length of the cylinder, in undulating waves. Other rods have appendages that look more like very rapidly beating insect wings. In addition to their three-dimensional character, these rods seemed to act in intelligent ways. Sometimes, several rods followed each other, and seemed to play in the manner that butterflies do. Sometimes, they followed people, but they never went through other objects. They always went around them, even when this meant deviating from the path they'd been on before. This seemed to indicate that they could not pass through solid objects, and that they might be alive. Beebs abyssal fishes are several different species of never-before-seen deep-sea fish 
observed by William Beebe in a bathysphere in the North Atlantic Ocean off Nonsuch Island, Bermuda, between 1930 and 1934, and never seen since. These include an abyssal rainbow gar, five-lined constellation fish, pallid sailfin, and a three-starred anglerfish. Beebe's bathysphere dives incorporated the first direct observations of abyssal fishes in their natural environment. No specimens of these species have so far been obtained. Assuming that Beebe's testimony was truthful, there are secrets of the sea that were revealed to humanity only briefly before disappearing back into its depths dark and alien anonymity. The Flatwoods Monster is a cryptid sighted in the forests of Flatwoods and Frametown, West Virginia. It is believed to be of extraterrestrial nature. At 7.15pm on the 12th of September 1952, three boys witnessed a bright object cross the sky. The object came to rest on land belonging to a local farmer. Once they saw it land, the boys went to one of their mother's houses, where they reported seeing a UFO crash land in the hills. From there, the boys and a group of locals went to the farm to try and find whatever it was that the boys had seen. One of the locals' dogs ran ahead out of sight and started barking, then moments later ran back to the group with its tail between its legs. After travelling about a quarter of a mile, the group reached the top of a hill where they reportedly saw a large, pulsating ball of fire about 50 feet away. They also saw a mist that made their eyes and noses burn. A farmer then noticed two small lights over to the left of the object and directed his flashlight towards them, revealing the creature, which was reported to have emitted a shrill hissing noise before gliding towards them, then, all of a sudden, changed direction and headed off towards the red light. At this point, the group fled in panic. The Were Tiger is a feline cryptid said to inhabit forests all across the continent of Asia. Usually, the cryptid would eat livestock, especially chickens, although it was not uncommon for them to eat humans. Although some variations of the beast exist, most agree that the creature looks like a humanoid tiger. Although in some countries, Were Tigers are humans with the ability to shapeshift into a tiger. When a person would wear a specific skirt, the item would grow longer, turning yellow and black. The person is then transformed into a tiger, where he or she must find another victim to devour to release his or her soul. The USS Stein Monster was a creature said to have attacked the Knox-class destroyer escort, USS Stein. She was named after US Marine Tony Stein, who received the Medal of Honor posthumously after his part in the Battle of Iwo Jima. In 1976, the ship was attacked by an unknown species of giant squid. The creature damaged the rubber coating of her sonar dome, over 8% of the surface coating was damaged. Nearly all of the cuts contained remnants of the curved claws found on the rims of suction cups on squid's tentacles. The claws were much larger than any reported at the time, and the creature was estimated to have measured up to 150 feet in length. Encountered in Enfield, Illinois, USA, the bizarre string of events that would eventually stir the small Illinois town of Enfield into a frenzy of fear began on April 25th, 1973, when a young boy named Greg Garrett claimed to have been attacked by a bizarre creature while playing in his backyard. The child described the being as having three legs, grey slimy skin, short claws, and red eyes. The creature apparently stamped on the boy's feet with its own, tearing his tennis shoes to shreds. Greg, hysterical, wasted no time scurrying away from the fiend and back into the relative safety of his parents' house. 
While one's initial assumption would be that this story is nothing more than a product of a child's overactive imagination, Greg's encounter wouldn't be the last, as many more would be reported later, including the Garrett's neighbour, a mere half an hour after Greg's. Tall white aliens, named so for their resemblance to the more well-known greys, except for being far taller and a pale chalk white colour. They are said to be between 6 and 7 feet tall, some as tall as 7 foot 5. These tall, slender extraterrestrials are said to thrive in arid, dry atmospheres. Tall whites have very large eyes that are blue at childhood, but turn pink as they age. While tall whites are said to be physically weak after numerous genetic manipulations to their genus, their long limbs can propel them faster than a human runner. The Hat Man is a phenomenon in which witnesses report seeing a shadowy entity. It looks like a shadow, or ghost, of a person wearing an old style hat. The Hat Man is almost always seen just standing up. This form has no apparent reaction to people. For example, many people reported bumping into this entity, which does absolutely nothing for seconds or minutes, then moves around a short while before vanishing, as if it couldn't detect who saw it. However, it is not always reported to be harmless. The Hat Man has sometimes been mentioned as a distinct entity, and witnesses reported that they felt utter terror upon seeing it. Others have reported that this entity feeds on fear, and does not vanish, but simply walks away as any normal person would. <laughs> 